Today's video will be a very brief overview of network security. Let's get started. As you're probably aware, the field of network security or cybersecurity is a vast and complex one. So today's video will certainly not be comprehensive. We just seek to overview certain types of attacks that are commonly observed in networks. We can look at the field of network security from a number of perspectives, including what types of attacks are possible, what types of defenses are possible, and how the network architecture itself could be changed to be more resistant to attacks. As you're probably aware, the internet was not designed with security in mind. The original users of the internet probably knew each other by name. They mutually trusted each other and access to the network was restricted by things like locked doors and guards. The idea that the network would be public and open to the entire world's population was not part of the original design considerations. This has left network architects playing a game of catch up ever since. For security to be effective, it must be considered at all layers of the network. One example of an attack classification is malware. Malware may arrive at the host either as a worm or a virus. The intent and operations of malware may be widely varied. You've probably heard of ransomware in the news recently, wherein the virus prevents the user from accessing the contents of their own computer unless they pay some amount to get it unlocked. Another type is spyware, which observes the activities of the user hoping to gather compromising information of some form. Or the host may be used to do some sort of work for the adversary, such as participating in a botnet or mining for Bitcoin. Another category of attacks are denial of service attacks. Denial of service attacks are any attack where the goal is to prevent a service from operating as expected. In terms of the network, this typically means using up the available bandwidth to prevent it from being used for legitimate traffic or consuming the CPU or memory resources of a server to prevent that from being available to legitimate connections. The process of a denial of service attack involves selecting a target, in some way compromising hosts around the network, for example, by getting them to participate in a botnet, and then having these compromised hosts send packets to the target Considering that some botnets are composed of millions of hosts, you can imagine how they would be able to overwhelm even a well-provisioned target. A very different type of attack is packet sniffing. In this attack, the attacker is able to overhear and collect traffic that is not addressed to them. This is particularly effective in shared media, such as older forms of wired ethernet and wireless ethernet even to today. In this example, host B is sending traffic to the destination A. However, because it's a shared media, compromised host C overhears this and records it. Packet sniffing software is widely available, and in one of the labs we'll be using Wireshark, which is an example of a packet sniffer. Something else that an attacker may do is spoof a source IP address. In this case, host C is sending a packet to A with a spoofed address that belongs to B. This may cause host A to send traffic back to B that B never solicited and could be a component of a denial of service attack. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is just a brief overview of network security, and we'll see much more detail on this later on. In our next section, we'll be looking at protocol layers and service models. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.